Hey, it's Jessica Goose here with realagriculture.com and I am at FarmTech 2020. Joining me right now to talk all about value creation is Lauren Cummin, who is the uh, Grain Growers of Canada Working Group of Value Creations Chair and then a uh, fan of real agriculture, or at least we're a fan of you, Todd. Uh, Todd Hyra with CCAN here. How, uh, how's everyone doing? The day is almost over. I know I'm kind of stealing you away from beer time here, um, but pretty good so far? Absolutely. Great pretty to be here. Good so far. Awesome. That is great. It's definitely a fun conference to be at. Uh, pretty jam-packed with all the sessions that are going on, the trade sh show booths, obviously. And uh, one thing that you guys were on for a panel uh, was about value creation, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So, um, like I said, kind of prior to this interview, I have felt that it's kind of on a roller coaster, and we've, uh, as egg, have been, you know, in the seat, uh, going up and up and up, and talking about it, really hearing about it, and now it's kind of dropped off. I haven't really really been hearing too, too much on it. So um, I guess, Lauren, this might be a question for you. Where are we seeing value creation right now? And uh, what's kind of with the standstill? So you said it was like a roller coaster and it, it really is. So this has been a 12 year journey for those who have been around for 12 years. Uh, like Todd. <laughs> Todd, we're uh, recording I've, over here. I've actually been involved in the file for seven years. So when I first started with Alberta Wheat Commission uh, back in 2013, this was a very hot topic. Mm -hmm. CSTA was holding uh, various consultation sessions to try and, and work out a value creation model. Mm -hmm. At that time, it, you know, the big talk was the endpoint royalty and pretty much only the endpoint royalty. And then we had a lull. Um, you know, we talked a bit about f different farmer uh, breeding models mm -hmm. where, where farmers could uh, own their own uh, breeding companies. And then that kind of died off for a while. And then at the Grains Roundtable, the, it, it came back up and um, they struck a working group to come up with some models for mm -hmm. value creation, uh, which would be presented to CFIA and AAFC. Uh, for them to sort of pick a pick a winner and mm. consult on, and those two models uh, were, of course, the trailing royalty model or the farm safe seed model and the endpoint royalty model. Right. Um, so CFIA and AFC started their consultations uh, in 2018. So in the fall of 2018. Mm -hmm. So over a year ago now, and they did consultations in multiple locations across Canada. And then they were going to uh, do an economic analysis, which is, is what producers were calling for. Let's right. see how this, this how works does it play out. out. Yeah. Right. How does this affect producers' bottom line? Mm -hmm. um, and they were going to do an online consultation. Of course, it takes some time to, to build that information up. They wanted to have their own small advisory group to consult on, on what they were going to provide to the larger consultation. Then we had an election. Yeah. So obviously the election was uh, last fall and now we're sort of waiting to see if they're going to pick that up. So they did promise they were going to do the online consultation, release the economic analysis. Are they still planning to do that? Okay. And that's okay. sort of where we are. We're at a bit of a standstill now. Okay. Kind of waiting on the government as so it happens to be with most things. Yes, but, that's right. Uh, Todd, when we're hearing about, you know, information that the government wants, uh, they kind of keep on saying, well, we need more information, we need more information, we need more... At what point do we kind of say, okay, we've provided you with everything? Well, I, th I think that's one of the challenges is the... It's a it's a political hot potato. Yeah. Um, Nobody wants to hold it. No, absolutely. <laughs> and so uh, this is... Uh, I've been one of the ones that have been around for at least 12 years on this one. Yeah. And so we continue to talk, continue to try and evolve things, but eventually we need to do something. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think it's, uh, I applaud some of the efforts that have been going on recently. So you, you may not have seen all of it, but uh, the uh, Gr Grain Growers of Canada and the uh, Canadian Federation of Agriculture have been working on some principles, which uh, I applaud that, uh, that progress and moving forward to um, frame up what mm -hmm. is required. And, and so we've been down some of those paths before, but having producer groups as a, as a whole agree to those is a, is a big step on this one. Uh, from what I understand, the economic analysis is is in the works and should be out in the next while. Okay. And so that's, um, once again, another piece of this puzzle that helps us move forward and gather more information. Um, 
I don't think I'm going to see, ever see the government tell us what's going to happen. It'll be up to us. It'll be up to producer groups, seed industry to work together to try and move these things forward. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really applaud uh, mm -hmm. some of these steps that are kind of been reinitiated. Over the summer with the election, yeah, things went absolutely quiet. And now's the time to re-engage. It's meeting season. Over the next couple of months will be... Uh, critical time to help move mm -hmm. things forward. Mm -hmm. And people need to kind of, I think, realize that things take time, right? This, this isn't going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen at the snap of your fingers. However, there has been talk. Do you feel as though the government will ever pick one of the two models? Or do you think that we might go back to the drawing board again? I, I don't think the government will pick. I think it'll be up to the industry to okay. pick. Okay. I, I agree with Todd. They're, they're very much handing that hot potato, as you say, off to industry and they're waiting for for producers and, and for private industry mm -hmm. um, to hopefully come to a, a decision together. A conclusion. Okay, okay. Um, I have recently been told that the CPTA has announced a pilot project and they're kind of heading their own uh, kind of way in regards to a sea trailing system. Do we know what that looks like or if kind of individual companies might get on to that? Has Seacan gone on with it? Well, yeah. So announced might be a little bit ahead of the... Okay. Uh, uh, so it's, Small it's, coffee it's, so, talk. Yeah. <laughs> so, so so it's been something I've been talking conceptually about the, the need to do this for six months, a year now. So. Okay. Um, but in reality, yes, it's, it's getting closer to... Uh, we've had... Our first meeting was today, actually. Oh, okay. So it's, it's uh, getting closer to building something that uh, is truly a pilot. And mm -hmm. so it's important that everybody understands that it, if we go forward with something, it will be a pilot. Yeah, pilot to, projects don't mean permanent. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they both start with P, but that does not mean that's and the final result. So the, the whole, the from from a CCAN perspective, um, our goal is to understand how what, what the producer uptake would be, mm -hmm. uh, understand uh, how the system would work for producers, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. um, because we know some people will just say, absolutely not, that's not what I want. But others have told us, yeah, okay, bring, it, bring this on, absolutely. Okay. So, so it's, a, it's about understanding the mechanics on the collection, um, the actual uh, interface with producers, and then on the back end, uh, seeing the money flow back into the mm -hmm. breeding programs. That's a critical piece in uh, ensuring we understand how that works and having some of those discussions. Mm -hmm. So that's all just on the very, very early edge. And so uh, um, it's, it's a discussion, and yeah. we're hoping to do something, but uh, it's certainly not done in that yet. In that beginning it's stage. Infancy, yeah. um, and now coming back to farm tech here, Lauren, uh, maybe talk to me about what are you hearing from farmers? Um, what has kind of been the, the talk? What have they been asking? Are you seeing any questions uh, kind of asked and asked over and over again where the answer might be simple and right there, yeah. but maybe people are just still confused? I think it's a it's a bit of a mixed bag depending on who you're talking to and uh, how involved that particular producer has been in the conversation. So I, I mean I see producers that have been right there at the table the whole time, and I see producers that could look at me and say, "I'm sorry, what are you talking about?" Right. So sorry, who are you? You've been working on yeah. this for 12 years and so you're like, "How do you not like, know no, who it's I been am?" In every <laughs> newsletter. Yeah. Um, My name's at the bottom. Go to read yeah. to the bottom. <laughs> so I, I think you you really do see see quite a spectrum. Of, of, uh, of knowledge. Um, I think some of the things that, that we hear quite commonly are the concern for the practice of farm safe seed mm. use. Um, you know, we I think we have a 20% rate on, on certified seed use, which means 80% is, is farm safe seed. Mm -hmm. And I think producers are concerned about their ability to continue to use that farm safe seed and uh, you know how the how that plays into the economics on their farm, mm -hmm. and how it's going to continue to play into the economics on their farm if if they do um, they do have a royalty system in place. Mm -hmm. So that's probably one of the biggest concerns. Um, you know they're concerned about the administrative burden, uh, the aud potential audit process. Uh, there could be there's going to be a lot of slippage because even in a, a commission checkoff or levy we see slippage so yeah. we know that that's that's going to be nobody's in place. perfect it's no, you're going right? to have to have paperwork you're yeah. going to have to have that all yeah. filled out at the front or the back you're yeah. going to have some slippage so producers are, are concerned concerned about that process um, so. I, I, they're concerned about signing a contract as well mm. if they're not already, you know, involved in a contract for their seed. Okay. So I, I think uh, there's quite a spectrum of concern. I think there overall, though, there is agreement amongst producers that 
uh, variety development is important. Yep. We have an excellent public breeding system, and we hope that the federal government is going to be at the table and continuing to partner with producers to bring new varieties out. Mm -hmm. um, but programs, government programs change based on the whim of the government in power. Yeah. So I, I think we, we are looking at different things to see how can we safeguard our programs and mm -hmm. make sure that they're going to be there for producers um, to continue to provide us with great, you know, new varieties that respond to all of the threats that we're seeing, you know, environmentally and also that are going to deliver what our customers want. want. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Todd, lastly here, kind of milestones. What do you say is going to be kind of the next step uh, to uh, for value creation? Is it waiting on the government again to kind of get back? No, I don't think we wait on government. I think we work with government to uh, to, uh, to to help frame up a, a regulatory uh, system that's going to ensure equality and uh, consistency. So that's that's one of the pieces they can do. Mm -hmm. But I really do think it's up to the industry. So producers, uh, seed developers, seed distributors mm -hmm. to develop a system that's going to work for both yeah. and uh, ensure that uh, it's something that is going to be fair. Uh, once again, going back to the principles, ensuring that there's alignment there. Those are all pieces that uh, ensure something's going to work long term. Great. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of what's to come, especially for 2020, as I'm sure uh, this con this talk will uh, continue to happen going forward. Thank you so much again, guys, for this for your time. I appreciate it as always. Thanks. Our pleasure.